Okay, hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Hope your week's going well for you. This is a little bit of a video that is a little out of my comfort zone. I recently became interested in NetBSD. And really it's it's one of the lesser or less popular BSDs out there. You know, when most people try a BSD, they go for free BSD or open BSD and there are others. Uh, some of the other ones gaining popularity and uh, there's really not much information that I could find about NetBSD but I wanted to try it and what I'm doing here is I'm going to show how I was able to get NetBSD to multi-boot or in in some cases maybe dual boot with Linux and specifically Devlin or Debian however you want to say it but I was able to get NetBSD to multi-boot on my Linux system which is a Devlin system so I want to clarify I am not I am not a NetBSD expert. I've only just begun using it and I'm really looking forward to exploring the system and learning more about it. And <clears throat> let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Now I'm not going to go over the complete installation process. What I will do is I will link to Reba Linux. I believe that's how it's pronounced. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Reba Linux, who does a full installation, and another channel that I have no clue. I can't remember what he uh, what he or his channel is called, but I'm going to link to both of those channels and what I'm going to show is what I did in order to be able to multi-boot on my Linux system with NetBSD. I, was, I wasn't able to find hardly any information about what I needed to do so a lot of this was trial and error. I think I went through about I'm gonna say seven installations and I will cover why there were seven installations of NetBSD before I finally finally got all the steps right and got it to where it was multi-booting on my system. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now again I'm not showing the whole installation process I'm just going to show what I did in order to be able to multi-boot or this will also work with a dual boot system. All right now I want to point out one reason it took first I apologize I know these <clears throat> I know these pictures are kinda of blurry unfortunately I do not have a video camera and so I was taking pictures of my uh, computer screen with a cell phone and I was doing this in the dark <laughs> because I was getting so much glare from the lights on the screen so I apologize for the blurriness of the photos. What I want to point out is you, if you see these uh, these green sentences here, this was a bleed through I was getting from the terminal. It would bleed through onto the installation screen. Everything you see that's blue and white, that's the installation screen. And I was getting this bleed through from the terminal and what it was I finally figured out what was happening this bleed through would come through I was trying to take my time and read everything that was on the screens and after just a few seconds I would start getting this bleed through it was dumping this from the terminal or from TTY into the installation screen and 
what it was, one was my mouse. If you see here, I don't know if you can see my cursor moving around. That's the mouse. So I went through, I think, two or three. I mean, I tried burning the uh, ISO several times. I tried new downloads. I tried different things. And every time I would get this bleed through or where it was dumping this into the installation screen and every time it would just cover up eventually cover up everything I was trying to read and I figured out well Dan read the messages <laughs> so what it was I got this message about the mouse so on the next installation I unplugged my mouse you don't need your mouse anyway you can do everything with your arrow keys and that worked for a moment and then I started getting another bleed through which was my charger for my laptop so I did I started all over again had my mouse unplugged had my charger unplugged from my laptop and it was perfect I didn't get any more of these messages getting in the way of what I was trying to read so that's one reason it took me so many times to try uh, to try and figure out how to get this to multi-boot on my system. All right, that's the only reason I wanted to show that. I wanted to warn you: uh, if you try this and you get these messages, try unplugging your mouse and unplugging your charger. All right. Now this picture, I know it's blurry. I just wanted to show that I had no entry whatsoever for NetBSD on my grub screen. Alright, <clears throat> now here you have to choose whether you want to use the entire disk or edit the MBR partition table. If you use the entire disk, that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to use the entire disk and NetBSD is going to take up your entire hard disk. So I chose edit the MBR partition table. And when you click on that, you're going to be brought to this screen right here. Now when I set up my system, what I did, if you notice, this says Windows FAT32 everything else is Linux 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 these are all my different partitions that's why I'm saying multi-boot if you just have two systems uh, on your computer you won't have all this stuff what I did I went in and I formatted a partition to FAT32 and I did that for this specific reason I wasn't sure what I was going to be greeted with when I came to this partitioning stage. So I wanted I wanted to I wanted it to be specific that this partition was different than everything else. Now that I've done it, I realize I didn't have to worry about that. Just whichever partition I had decided to put NetBSD on, I could have chosen that partition. But that's why I did it. I, I partitioned or I formatted that partition to FAT32. So that's the one I wanted to use. So I clicked on that. I put that on that partition. You see it's highlighted and clicked on it with my enter key on my keyboard. And when I clicked on it, it brought up this screen. Here we see we have the type Windows FAT32 and all I did highlighted that and clicked on it with my enter key on my keyboard again and after I did that it brought up one other window which is this one right here and here you can choose what you want that to be or what type you want it to be and of course I chose I know it's blurry NetBSD clicked on NetBSD brought me back to this now you can see the type has changed to NetBSD 
I came down, used my arrow keys, partition OK, clicked on that. And now this is back to the main screen. You can see now that it is NetBSD. And I came down here and clicked Partition Table OK. Now this one, uh, I really hope some NetBSD people might happen to find this. This is what worked for me. It said, should the NetBSD partition of the disk be marked active? And what I took that to mean is if you're familiar with Linux, like if you install a system and you put it on your MBR, that's going to be your master boot record. That's the system that's going to take over your grub. Should NetBSD take over your grub? <laughs> that's the way I read this. And I said no. And clicked on that. And you can't read this whole part here, but it says you've not marked a partition active. This may cause your system to not start up properly. And that's kind of a scary warning. You think, oh no, I've ruined my computer. But that's what you want. If you want Linux to uh, still control your MBR, that's exactly what you want. So you come here, do you want to re-edit the MBR partitions? And I chose B, use this partitions anyway clicked on that and this one I'm not sure about again I hope a NetBSD user will let me know if I did the wrong thing here it says do you want to update the boot code in the master boot record to the latest version of the NetBSD boot code I believe that's what that says boot code uh, when I saw master boot record that kinda worried me so I said no and everything worked out fine but if that was the wrong decision and you're a NetBSD user please let me know and I chose you get the opportunity do you want to set the sizes manually of the partitions for NetBSD or use the default I chose use the default and it shows the defaults and I just came down here and chose partition sizes OK. OK, I went to <laughs> I went to the next uh, screenshot and didn't mean to. That's it. Uh, now, like I said, I did not show the whole installation process. I wanted to show what I did in order to multi-boot FreeBSD, I mean NetBSD on my computer. And those were the steps I had to do. So, what happens after you've finished, you've gone through the whole installation, uh, there's, there's more after this, you've gone through the whole installation and it comes time to choose to reboot your computer after everything is finished, you come up, you reboot your computer, and there's no NetBSD listed in your grub screen. So what I did, I've had experience with FreeBSD and OpenBSD. What I did was use what I learned for how to use FreeBSD on a dual or multi-boot system. And what that was, if you open your file manager as root, I'm not going to open it as root. I'm just going to show where, let's see, etc, I believe it's default, I might be in the wrong, no, etc, Grub D, yeah, etc. Grub D, and this 40 custom, this script right here. You'll have to do this as root. 
but let me show that to you what I did that was another thing I couldn't find very much information online about how to put NetBSD into a grub screen so all I did was do what I did on FreeBSD and it worked let me increase the font here so you can see it easier all right on this 40 underscore custom script what I did was I added these lines right here and I will give you a moment to look at that and just see what I did uh, menu entry and you can name this whatever you want put it in these quotation marks and then this character on the next line put set root now I put mine on partition number one whatever partition you put it on you need to put that number in right there HDO comma your partition number and chain loader plus one if you don't put that it won't it won't boot uh, I don't know why I tried it without putting that in there just to see what would happen and it wouldn't boot so I booted back into my main system and added that line but those are the lines you would need to add at least that's what worked for me And now I have a NetBSD system in my Grub screen, and I will show that to you. I've already shown it to you. <laughs> After I added that entry to that script, and there it is right there, NetBSD 9. And now I'll show you a vid not a video, a picture of this is my NetBSD system this is ufetch and you can see it's netbsd9 uh, and I'm using openbox still have a lot of work to do on it I love the system I'm really really enjoying working with it I am having some issues with getting my uh, earphone jack to work that was one strange thing when I first installed it the earphone jack worked out of the box. Speakers worked on my laptop. Earphones, uh, the earphone jack worked out of the, out of the box. And then it's like I installed a few things and rebooted, and my earphone jack no no longer worked. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure that out. But I just wanted to show this little picture here with UFET showing that I do have NetBSD up and running and I hope that helps some people again I am not a NetBSD expert please don't ask me any questions about it because I don't know <laughs> but if anyone has been wondering about dual booting or multi booting NetBSD with Linux specifically Devlin or Debian based systems that's what worked for me and I hope that helps you alright so there you go, guys. Hope you have a great week coming up, and take care. Thanks.